Turks accused of being Azerbaijani Air Force. We're going to get to, well, we're going we're gonna to start with this. Let's just start with, let's just give you the meat and potatoes right up front because I don't want to waste your time because, you know, I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. So sit on down there and uh, uh, welcome to the news bar. <clears throat> Armenia accused Azerbaijan of transferring control of the air operation in Nagorno-Karabakh to the Turkish Air Force. The press secretary of the Armenian Defense Minister, Shushan Shepanyan, made a corresponding statement on September 30th, Sputnik Armenia reports. So Azerbaijan launched an offensive against the Armenian military in Karabakh. Dozens of people died during the day of fighting. This is third Karabakh. This is, and this is from July 28th. Who do you think you are? Armenia and Azerbaijan are preparing for a war over Karabakh. How will the next aggravation at the border end? So there you have Yerevan and Baku. And Yerevan is the capital of Armenia. And Baku is the... Uh, capital of uh, Azerbaijan and that situation and uh, then Nagorno whatever is right here and that is also the Republic of Artsa which we'll get more into that oh oh this is this is what we're talking about so let's do the uh, Republic of Artsa Green Independent Artsa we have erected our home fortresses The history of our country, we have secured by our blood. All right, all right, all right, that was enough. I was getting zoned out there and I was just getting into the reciting and was, I was getting into this model where it was becoming a duty that I was performing. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I was supposed to say like 10 seconds of that. They got 20 seconds. Seven, tw because I drifted off into a pattern. You got 27 seconds. Well, congratulations. Okay, so Artsa, we'll get to you a little bit more later. As fighting rages on, Armenia, Azerbaijan, reject talks. Get a little more into that. Azerbaijan says two Armenian warplanes crashed, dismisses downing allegations. An aide to Azerbaijan President Ilham Aliyev, Aliyev said on Wednesday that two Armenian Su-25 fighter jets were destroyed on September 29 after crashing into a mountain and accused Yerevan, uh, that's Armenia, of lying about one of its planes being shot down. Armenia posted pictures earlier of the wreckage of a plane it said was a Su-25 warplane shot down by a Turkish fighter jet on Tuesday. It named the pilot as Major Valery Danelin, Turkey and Azerbaijan have denied the plane was shot down. Both planes crashed into a mountain and exploded and were destroyed. This shows the Armenian military leadership is not providing accurate information to its citizens and the public. Presidential aide Hikmat Hajayev said, Listen, I have little doubt that if, uh, if indeed the Turkish fighters were used in the downing of Armenian planes, especially if these Turkish fighters were ones these were sold to them by the US. Oh man, the the US will know. They'll know. I, I have a feeling that they are I mean I would assume if they're not if they're not religiously monitoring every part of every aspect of this then the crazy. I mean, at some point, when is the when is the NATO's going to look at the Turks and say, you know what, you really are fundamentally not aligned with us. You're you're out. You're done. The Turks won't be able to play Europe against the Middle East anymore. That's I mean, they they made a make a living off of being in the twi in the Twix for the last fifty some odd years, and without the Twix. If they don't have that pivot to play and all of Europe is just pretty much fed up with them. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, Turkey, maybe maybe Erdogan should have listened to Bismarck. Never fight a two-front war. 
And believe you me, the Middle East is, is up to their eyeballs. One of the biggest reasons, the Turkey and Iran are the fundamental reasons why you see these Middle Eastern countries that are coming to recognize Israel and make diplomat have diplomatic relations with Israel now. It's because of you. You did that. So the, uh, I don't need to go into why the conflict erupted. Uh, we've talked about that in earlier episodes, so comment down below if that's true. Actually, it is true. You can just find the earlier episodes on this channel. The predominantly Armenian... Okay, so this is a little bit more about that. I don't want to go into this. I want to go here now. Artsakh shot down, shoots down another Atzeri attacking drone. So this is Armenia press. Remember, this is pro-Armenia, so remember that. And here is Yerevan again. And uh, Mary, Armenian Ministry of Defense representative Artsrun... Hal Hanayasin Hanisian Hal Hal Hanisian Hal Hanisian So we got Ar Artsrun Hal Hanisian How about that Artsrun Hal Hanisian Oh I like that Hal Hanisian It's cool RSA. So Artsrun Hal Hanisian reports that the Artsakh military have downed another Azerbaijani attacking UAV in the morning of September 29th we again shut down a UAV, he said. The total of number of downed adversary UAVs reached 50. Because this is sacred land, because we know no retreat, because volunteers aren't giving their places at the huge queues and registration points, because the sons of cabinet members are volunteering to join the military, I am proud of you, Armenian nation, he said. Yeah, this is about ready. In my one video, I predicted that the outside forces would not be interested in seeing this become a full-fledged war. And I'm warning, I'm worried. Now, right now, this this is both concerning and also encouraging. But then when I see this, the Armenians fear Turkey is back to finish off the genocide. With do 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 good good reason to believe so. And especially when, you know, I don't know whether what the truth of that story is. Did the Turks shoot them down? Did they hit the mountain, the fighters? I don't know. Not nearly enough data and Almost all the sources that I could find out there were all almost, well, they're all biased. So <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. So the foreign minister, so this is uh, this is from the Daily Beast. The foreign minister of a disputed region of the Armenian-Azerbaijan border says his comrades in Armenia may have to call on Putin to face down the Turkish-backed forces. See that? Call on Putin. And and I'm telling you, Putin has a vested interest to assure that the Azerbaijanis do not take over in Armenia. The fighting in a mountain enclave in the Caucasus escalated Tuesday when Turkish-backed forces shelled five villages, including the capital of Stepanar Stepanakert, according to Armenian officials. And skirmishes broke out on the border of Azerbaijan. Now, that's interesting to Hey, they're calling them Turkish backed forces. So these are like their proxy forces. So these are these are militants that they're they were accused of bringing in, which I covered earlier before the war broke out. So skirmishes broke out. I already know about this. And we've already talked about the Ar Artsakh is, is pretty much Armenian. And then that other region, there's another region here, Nakchivin. Now that is the opposite. Now that is a semi-autonomous region and the Armenians basically want this region even though it is more ethnically Azerbaijani so they have Armenian ethnicity here within their lands and they have this they, and the Armenians they want this land back they want this land and they want this land and they kind of need it they kind of need these lands if they're going to survive as, as a viable force here because if they can't hold on to this southern land here and they're just this region over here. They lose so much of their mountainous uh, advantages that they have up in this region. Lots of power in that. Uh, n never mind uh, the. I, I mean, there, there, there's a lot more open space here. A lot more. I mean, it's. And you've got on your. Who, who do you have over here? Who is this over here? You got, you got the Turks. The Turks. You don't have a good relationship with the Turks. You remember the Turkish, the Armenian genocide, Armenian genocide, the uh, thing that uh, 
What is it? Uh, Chink uh, Younger uh, denied for some period of time and it says, oh man, oh man, I realize now it's true, man. Uh, 1.5 million people allegedly, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. So the genocide, this occurred between 1914 and 1923 and they just systematically went through trying to clear out the lands, basically. This is how things have been done through throughout most of human history, by the way. This is, all of this, by the way, just goes, all, 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 all the people in America are kind of being led to believe that the, you know, the racisms is fundamentally a white thing. It's a white thing. It's, it's the curse of the white race. They'll lead you to believe that the whiteness, white privilege garbage, rather than saying majority-ness and majority privilege, which is far more accurate. And you'll see it across the world in many, many dynamics. And this, uh, this tendency for individuals to find race an easy uh, aggregate to align yourself with and one that you'd be willing to kill other races for. It happens throughout human history. Now, I don't believe we need race constructs anymore, and I'm all for trying to figure out a way to end them without persecuting any other races in the process. But uh, I'm not here to try to tell people that they need to end their race constructs either. But uh, uh, this is... This is really uh, groups of people that have fundamentally formed vehicles of power that they have built their whole worlds around their businesses, their education, their religions, all of it. Armenians have their whole sets. Azerbaijanis have their whole sets. And these things are, they're fundamentally uh, not aligned. And as it so happened, both of them have that ethnic element. There is a bi blood element there. I guess you can call it their race supremacist in a sense if you really want to go by the American standard. American uh, SJW uh, would have to condemn Armenians and Azerbaijanis both as being racist, race supremacists. They're just fighting to preserve their races. That's what they're doing. They're fighting over lands that, that really... You got a situation where Azerbaijan has... As I said before, they have all this flat land. Armenia has all these mountains. And if Armenia can secure this whole area and this whole area here, they have a significant, significant uh, geopolitical advantage, at least defensively, as far as Azerbaijanis are concerned. And uh, Armenians are Christians, and they are Eastern Orthodox, by the way. That's another tie into the Russians. They are Orthodox. So they're tied to. So if, they, if I'll just tell you this if Putin were to leave the Armenians hanging to the Turks, he would probably be out of power. And, uh, you know, when I was doing my earlier now, I don't know why I didn't even. I'm learning more about this stuff quickly as I'm covering this because uh, my familiar, I mean, I've had some familiarity of Armenian and Azerbaijan before this, but I'm learning a lot as I'm, as I'm getting into this. Well, well, basically covering this. So now I begin to understand just how much more I, I understood in other ways why Russia would, I mean, just, just in terms of blunting Turkey alone, Russia would be interested in that. But now, you know, I really did. And right now, Putin is really relying a lot on that Orthodox Church power as a, as a, as a source of legitimization of his own power, even legitimization of, of the Russian state's power itself. There's a lot. Of, I mean, I'm not saying that they're mixing church and state. They're not a theocracy, but the the open embrace of the Russian Orthodox Church and the and the uh, well, I'll say the the more guarded embrace by the Russian Orthodox Church of the Russian state has been significant, especially early on. Well, especially the last ten years or so has been significant in helping P Putin hold on to well not hold on to more uh, secure and keep himself for the periods of time where he was really popular it really helped him a lot when uh, that that union and it, it by the way it's one of the reasons why conservatives like russians it's 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 it's, it's, it's easy to understand it's why why do uh why why does the american left tend to like the chinese because the chinese are more like them and the russians are more like conservatives the russians don't want the uh uh, yeah, the Russians, uh, well, they're Christians fundamentally, and 
uh, American leftists fundamentally on the main are overwhelmingly are not I don't want to say atheist, atheistic, agnostic, more agnostic, more deistic, agnostic, kind of uh, more. But they're they they they're predominantly atheistic in their political expressions. I would say there's there's not much deification in their world. There's spirituality, but it's not it's not external to the human kind of spirit. It's in well anyway. Never mind. I'm I'm getting down a path here. So back to Armenian Azerbaijan in this situation, as I see it, these guys are, uh, I said in earlier, they're, 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 they're all, tra they're kind of human beings trapped in these vehicles of power that are tied also to the land. And these folks don't have tremendous opportunities to choose to live anywhere else in the world. This is where they live. This is where they live. Uh, I want to repeat that. This is where they live this is where they live so they got to make it here if they can't make it here they can't make it period that's just it because this is it this is it so they live here in this in this world uh in this uh, physical reality with their mountains and their armenia and azerbaijan's plains and uh with all of their vehicles of power in their head their religious vehicles of power whatever social constructs they have whether it's religious based or i don't know the totality of which armenian culture is all religion i'm sure they have plenty of 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 other diverse expressions maybe not nearly as much as like say america does but i'm sure there's some variations in ours or by john i'm sure but on the main they're they're especially during this period of time where armenians can realistically perceive and perhaps rightly so that they're about ready to fight for their very existence we americans we just don't know and i I just, I've mentioned this before, and I'm just going to bring this over to us Americans, how, how spoiled we are and how, how much the world must hate us in our, in our, in our, in our privileged place. All of us, you know, whether you're black, white, or whatever you are, if you grow up in America, the rest of the world is looking at you arguing about white privilege and saying white privilege. What about American privilege? You people, you people make us sick. I'm sure they're sick of us. I'm sure they're sick of watching us uh, implode on ourselves over over idiocies. And uh, uh, meanwhile, we live in this wonderful place, safe place. Look at this. It's Canada and Mexico. Imagine you were born. I was born. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. May 19th, 1968, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Where Where is it? It's not it. Where is it? That's, there we go, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So I was born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 1968. And you know what? I did not experience anything like growing up in France, growing up in Spain, growing up in Saudi Arabia, growing up in Iran, growing up in India. No, maybe not so much. Uh, yeah, growing up in India, yeah, definitely. Growing up in Thailand, growing up in China, growing up in North Korea, growing up in Mongolia, Kazakhstan, etc., etc. Definitely growing up in Armenia, definitely growing up in Azerbaijan. You have memories, recent memories, of your communities being existentially threatened and having to deal with uh, other uh, massive entities that were hell bent on seeing your your lives come to an end. You have that memory. You have that type of uh, temporal connection to what is. You have a much more grounded sense of, of the world around you on the main, because you are much more tied to the uh, the blood and bone reality of living, because you have a much more recent memory of of. Of real humans acting in physical space in the in the space where you live at massive scales that that led to the deaths of of many of your 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 neighbors your family members and your neighbors family immediate family members or your their grandparents they remember that all their grandparents gone whatever it might be like you don't know what it like it's I mean I don't know what it's like to live there I can only Exist, I can only ideationally enter into that, and I can't know it out of blood and bone, and, and God willing, and 
Well, help me God, I hope I never do. I really, I don't want to learn it. I don't want to experience it. But we never have. And that's where these folks are now. So whatever you got, if you got any, uh, I mean, I, I would, uh, whatever you could do to help any, uh, both sides as far as they're injured and whatever. Most of these humans, whether they're Armenian young men or, and they're mostly going to be young men. Armenian young men or Azerbaijani young men, under any under different circumstances, if these guys were born, they could very well be good friends. But because they found themselves within these particular vehicles of power, the Armenian vehicle of power, the Azerbaijani vehicle of power, and within this geopolitical reality, with these massive forces outside with vested interests to interfere with their internal plans this is this is what it's like to live in that land this is what it's like to live in that space and i mean i hope by some miracle that uh this is avoided i still believe it's probably still slightly more than likely that there will eventually be a peace but in armenia is most likely going to have to concede some level of something if well we'll see because if if it's proven that the Turks use their air force, then all of a sudden, all the initial, uh, if, if, I mean, you know, I'm speaking out, out with uncertain data, as I told you, the, the people providing the data are all biased, but as, as far as I can tell, I would say Azerbaijan may have a, a re, some case to make that the Armenian struck first. And if they did, then they, that that might be lost if the Turks have indeed been using their air force to down Armenian fighters, and the Turks have been using American fighters to do it. Then suddenly the Americans, I am telling you, I keep saying this: a Russian American. Now there's an alliance forming. I'm going to talk about maybe in another show. Uh, there's an American. Uh, there is an American, British, Japanese, Australian, Indian alliance forming. It's that's possibly going to become a, like a NATO of, of Asia. And in that mix, you need to throw in Russia. Russia, need, you, you just add Russia to, to that part right there and you've got it. You've got the, the, the balance of power that could stabilize so many of these places. And America and Russia are going to have to make some concessions and trade off a little. America, you're going to have to concede and, like, back off to Ukraine. And Russia, you're going to have to back off of Venezuela. And uh, I think those are, those would be two of the, the biggest, the easiest trade-offs, I would, I would imagine, that they could possibly make. We're going to respect your zone. You respect our zone. Uh, I'm not talking about any kind of moral thing as to whether Trump, Putin is a good guy or Trump is or Armenians are. Is there, but no, no, I'm just talking about pragmatically. Uh, I do believe that that type of alliance would would potentially uh, settle a lot of the small wars that are going on around this world right now. If those folks could, could, could continuously be on the same page across the board, a lot of people would have to get their act together. I'm just saying. That's an alliance that a lot of people are going to have to start acting like adults again, including we Americans internally, because we can't compete with these folks if we continue to act like children internally. And I think with that, I'm going to I'm going to end this uh, episode. I thank you for watching. This is a, these are basically I don't always do a night episode, but I do a night episode when I feel like there's something I want to get out right away. Uh, because I do videos in advance and but when I have urgent stories I know I'll do something at night so this is one of those examples so here you go enjoy so this is Turks accused of being Azerbai of being Azerbaijani Air Force basically and with that I uh, I say have a great rest of your day because why the heck not